turnout. I was telling someone I sent 150 um, flyers inviting people to come tonight. This is just great. My name is Susan DeCastro. For those of you from West Bridgewater, I'm the one with the picture on, on the signs. Uh, people mention it to me all the time. I can't run a stop sign or even, you know, try to get through the supermarket with 11 items in my, in my basket because people know who I am. So in any event, thank you for coming tonight. I represent Ward 4. This proposed project is in Ward 4 off Copeland Street. Um, it's a neighborhood meeting to listen to a presentation by the owner and the developers, his consultants, and to ask questions. So without further ado, I will pass the microphone to, okay. So we have attorney Philip Nessarella representing the owners, and we have Scott Beria, who is an engineer with John Holmgren um, Engineers. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, with me this evening is uh, Mr. Scott Farrier, principal engineer for J.K. Holmgren, and the principal owner of the facility, Mr. Surajan Abraham. Um, to begin with, I'd like to express our gratitude to Councilor Nicastro for organizing this uh, so it would be an informational um, forum at minimum and we think it's important for the neighbors to understand what we're doing, to give us any input and expect feedback from us. Uh, this piece of property on Copeland Street, formerly, and I'm going back into the 80s, the Wedgwood Country Club, when I was uh, uh, practicing law, my then partner <clears throat> was attorney Ken Elias who owned it, so I'm pretty familiar with the property and spent a lot of time down there. Not golfing, but just picking them up in the morning. And um, now the project before us, uh, I believe, and i like to suggest, is a rather attractive al alternative to what we, uh, some of the plans that we've had on the drawing board. And this is to put down um, some very nice units. We're, we're contemplating 35 units in this area, two major roadways going in and out, and we have 25,000 foot area lot size. The zoning code calls for 30,000 square feet, which is a lot, and there are a lot of homes in Brockton that have that. We are going slightly under that at 25,000 square feet, which would almost be indistinguishable from the 30,000 that are allowed. The zoning code requires frontage of 175 feet. We are re will be requesting from the zoning board 125 feet. We believe that with the area lot size at 25,000, a large amount, it will allow for a good size home. It won't look cramped, it won't feel cramped, and it will create a rather attractive flow and design throughout the project. I will pass the microphone over to Mr. Faria. He can expand on the design a little bit, then we'll be happy to entertain any questions that you may have. Good evening, folks. Uh, as Phil said, my name is Scott Ferry with J.K. Holmgren Engineering. Uh, we're the engineers and surveyors on the project. Uh, we'll just try to keep it brief and, and get right to all your questions. But uh, the main focus on the property, uh, we have two entrances off of Copeland Street. Uh, main reason to have the two entrances, Brockton doesn't allow uh, a long dead-end road. So in this case, where we have a, a significant amount of frontage on Copeland Street, we're able to put in two roads uh, so we don't have a dead-end situation. We end up with a loop roadway, a small cul-de-sac. Uh, there are wetlands around the, the very back of the property uh, that we have to deal with. We have to stay away from those wetlands. Uh, the project, it's, uh, it's, kinda, it, it's a long approval process. We have to go to the planning board with a preliminary plan. Then we have to go to the Board of Appeals. We have to go back to the planning board with a definitive subdivision plan, and we have to go to Conservation Commission. So there's uh, the opportunity going forward for three more public hearings with three different boards in Brockton that you folks will all be notified of uh, those meetings and those dates. So there's going to be uh, plenty of opportunities for us to talk back and forth and to get all your input. But uh, as Phil said, the lot size that we're hoping for is 125 feet of frontage, 25,000 square feet. We're figuring on a... Uh, four bedroom colonial home, uh, single family homes, four bedrooms with an attached garage. Uh, typically the home size is about a 30 by 40 colonial 
with a 24-24 two-car garage. Uh, and laying those out, as you can see here, each house will be about 60 or 70 feet from its neighboring house. So there's still a good amount of property between all of the houses. Nothing will look all that cramped on the property. Uh, that's really a quick overview. I think as long as the council's okay with it, we might as well get right into any questions. If, I don't know if you want to raise your hand. I'll just Thank you for showing up. Uh, a couple quick questions. First of all, I, I take issue, and I, 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 I live in the area. I take issue with the fact, uh, Mr. Nasrallah, when you talk about slightly smaller in size, I think people would be concerned in terms of going in for the zoning that you're going down, 5,000 square feet, not 500. So I would suggest you watch your vocabulary in terms of how you describe things. To, to did I say 5, Yes, you did. And you also said slightly smaller in size. Now, one thing that I've seen uh, someone had posted on the, uh, on the internet, you probably saw it yesterday, uh, in terms of much like uh, uh, your uh, uh, engineer there was talking about uh, the city of Brockton requires uh, uh, two roadways. Now, if anybody lives in the area, uh, in terms of coming from West Bridgewater to the Brockton line, the line of sight is treacherous at best and limited uh, in terms of the cars uh, at that coming up to the fork in the road where they're going down North Elm Street or Copeland Street. And I think that's going to be one of the larger issues uh, in particular there. Uh, traffic has increased uh, considerably as the years have gone by along there. And uh, what uh, comments do you have concerning that? I agree with you. I agree that the line of sight going in and out of here is something uh, that has to be accounted for. We have a traffic engineer who is going to lay out what the best suggestions are. So it is of min there is no risk, or the most minimal risk that could be, uh, and we have the proper site for people coming and going. I'm clearly aware of what you're talking about. I'm aware and familiar with the curve in the road. That, to me, is an important item that we have to address. So I agree with you on that. One quick follow-up to that. Are both of the roadways that you're proposing going in and out are, are required, I should say? Are they both going to be two-way? Yes. Yes. Thank you. That's not only for accessibility, the ease of accessibility of motor vehicles, but a safety issue in the event if there was one roadway and a tree fell in the roadway, an emergency vehicle couldn't get in there. So we're trying to account for that. I just want to piggyback on what um, this gentleman said about 5,000 square feet smaller. It may be undistinguishable to you, but what that does is that enables you to put five to six more houses in. Is that correct? It allows us to put in five more houses. That's distinguishable. Yeah. That's big. The second thing is the traffic. I own two pieces of property right there. You can't get out of your driveway in the morning. Now you're going to add 30 to 90 more cars. Maybe even more, depending on how many people are going to live in those homes. Four bedrooms, big. That's a lot. Of, that You can go anywhere from, what, two, four cars. That's a lot. My other concern is wetlands. Where are the wetlands? Because if you go up and you play golf up there, your feet are wet. So if you start developing that land, am I going to get flooded out? There's a underground river that runs between two of the properties. And it comes out into the backside of Kmart with a pipeline. Now, I don't know if that pipe runs all the way or if it's just groundwater that goes in there but it eventually dumps out in the Salisbury River, right, of the brook. Yep, correct. Am I, am I going to be flooded out when you start excavating all of that land? Like I said, I own two properties mm -hmm. right there, right on Copeland Street. Sure. There's, there's only four houses right there, and then John's business, and, th and those are our houses. Mm -hmm. And I'm we're sure. going to be right there, right when you start excavating all of that dirt and all of that land. Mm -hmm. Everything's going to come rushing in. Never mind the fact that I'm not going to see deer in my backyard anymore. Understood. The wetlands are at the rear of the property. Uh, I, I think I said that there are wetlands on the property. We have to file with Conservation Commission to do any work within 100 feet of those wetlands. Uh, under Mass General Law, 
subdivision control law, Brockton Planning Board regulation. Uh, we have to do drainage calculations that requires us to handle any runoff from our project. There's a certain amount of runoff that happens right now on the golf course. Once we pave it and put in rooftops, we have to uh, accommodate that additional runoff that no longer is going to soak into the ground. That's why you typically see detention basins and things like that in subdivisions to hold back the water uh, that's no longer soaking into the ground. So that's all part of the approval process. But that's after you're paved and after you're roofed. What happens while you're doing it? Well, we, we, the second we start, we have to have those drainage facilities ready during construction. That's part of stormwater management guidelines. We have to have those, we have to have the property graded so even during construction, it's directed into these detention basins. So again, you're going um, in front of the planning board or whatever, and you're asking for smaller lots and smaller this and smaller that. Mm -hmm. What's to say that you don't ask for, well, gee, we don't want to put a retention pond in. I didn't hear you, I'm sorry. What happens when you say we don't want to put a retention pond in? Then you don't get approved. You you have to. We're, you have we're, to. We're yeah. We're mandated to handle the increase in runoff. There is an increase in runoff when you go from grass to pavement. Mm -hmm. We have to do that. They mm -hmm. have to construct it. There's no way around it. Okay. And again, just back to my question because I'd like that answered as to why you feel like you have to shove in more houses. I mean, that's kind of like the bottom line of that. I understand. I understand. The, um, the zoning code would allow us by right 30 homes. We're asking for 35. The reason we're doing that. I know it's more money. No, but it's more money for a particular reason. For your that pocket, allows I get us. It. That allows us to design and build a little classier house than we would if we didn't have that financial incentive. We've had several options on that property, condominium style properties, which we discounted. We talked. We we they. I was asked to. Uh, render an opinion about 40B type of housing, low-income housing. We, want, we rejected that. The owner rejected it. Mr. Ferry didn't think it was a good idea. I was simply giving out the options in a legal basis. The better option, and we know the neighborhood. It's a very classy neighborhood, wonderful homes, and people have been there a long time. So we certainly have to respect that. The difference between the 30 and the 35 homes, yes, more money to allow us to build a different type of home. It's a financial incentive for the builder and the developer. Uh, we did not feel it was, it is different, but not a major distinguishing feature between 30 and 35. Because as Mr. Farrier said, the, the width between houses is substantial, where no one's going to feel crowded in. It's not going to look like they are squeezed in units. They're going to be attractive houses. Uh, and when we say four bedrooms, they're gonna, it's going to be a good size home. So we thought that not going to 38 or 41 houses, but from 30 to 35 was not a giant leap, but it did help the fray cost and in, in, in give a impetus to what we wanted to expend for the type of home we wanted to build. That's the short answer of the whole thing. If that's how you want to look at it, I think it's more money in everybody's pockets. But Will this be using city water and sewerage? Yes. Okay. And what provisions have you made for the schools? If you're getting 35 houses with uh, additional children, what are you doing about schooling? There's no school in that area. So what does that create? And the schools that are in that area, I, I'm employed by the city, they're already crowded. Right. This side so. of the city is the only side of the city that does not have a new school within the last 10 years. So that's something to think about. Thank you. Question. Have you offered it to the city before you do all this development? See if the city wants to buy the golf course and maintain it as a golf course? Has that venture gone down the road or is it off the table? Could someone please contact the city and see if the city will buy it from you and keep it as a golf course? Because we'll lose it. Any, any place that we have to have entertainment or enjoyment is dwindling, extremely dwindling.
if the city's interested in buying the property, we'll certainly be happy to make the offer to them. You know, because it's it, it's open space that we're going to lose. No, I agree with you. I understand that. I mean, right. You know, who can argue against all green golf course as opposed to residential structures? But if somebody wants to buy the property at acceptable price, then uh, you know we'll be happy to approach the city. That that could be a a beneficial offer on your end by doing that without having to go through all this headache of trying to jump through hoops to get everything put in place to build houses. Grant you, I love to see houses out back, but you know what? I'd rather see the golf course. Well, if there were no headaches, I'd have no job, so I don't mind that that much, but I understand what you're saying. We have a couple of counselors here. We'll discuss it with them. We'll take it up the ladder and see if the city has that type of interest. Okay. Thank you. The other potential buyer would be the Brockton Country Club. I spoke with the president of the Country Club last week. He wasn't aware of this property you know, being redeveloped, and he said he would bring it to his board if there was interest in selling it to them. For years, I've, I've lived in this neighborhood for over 30 years. There's been talk about what if we joined the two golf courses together and made an 18 hole, oh, wouldn't that be dandy? And, and it would be dandy for everyone. It would be a win-win. I would love it if you would approach them about that. Uh, I will, tomorrow morning, I'll, I'll uh, make a communication. My name is uh, Jack Hughes. I'm an abutter. I live at, in West Bridgewater at 640 North Elm, and my house is on the 9th fairway. And um, first thing I want to say is thank you for not uh, coming here tonight and presenting us a Chapter 40B apartment complex on the second fairway or the third fairway. And I commend you for what you have brought as uh, something that's reasonable that I could live with and it's not necessarily what I would like, but a couple of the questions I have for the engineer is um, the delineation of um, wetlands yep. and um, has the survey or the Conservation Commission done a recent wetland survey? We haven't got that far yet, sir. We, uh, typically the way it goes, once we start on the job, we hire a botanist to go out there and flag the property. We locate them. That's what's on the plan, but we haven't filed anything at all with conservation, so they're not confirmed or, or agreed upon yet. So the reason I bring that up is um, the first fairway and parts of uh, the ninth fairway have a stream going through it. I wanted to know if that stream is delineated as a running body of water that has to have a 100-foot buffer. Right. And if it does, it goes through your third or fourth lot there. Sure, understood. And, and, and that would probably eliminate four houses. Mm -hmm. Nope, I if agree. If that has to happen. Have you gone into that detail yet? We have. Our botanist has. He looked at it. Uh, it doesn't qualify as a perennial stream, is the term that DEP uses. Uh, it's an intermittent stream, which doesn't have that same amount of protection. So tell him to come here in July and still watch the water go down it. It's pretty permanent. But, I understand. But that's, that's me. I live there. I understand it sure. maybe better than he does. Yep. But um, the issue that I really think needs further development or I understand where you came. I, I thought you're, you were crazy to have only uh, have two driveways or two streets coming in off of Copeland Street. Mm -hmm. I understand what's handcuffing you to do that. Mm -hmm. um, we would C prefer a one, obviously. I, you know, less city cost. regulations are right. preferring you, are requiring you to do that. But um, putting that uh, street where you've got it right next to my yard, it, it doesn't bother me that you put a street there. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can't turn out of that street and turn with a sight line looking south on Copeland Street or, mm -hmm. or Elm Street in West Bridgewater and see anything. I know because I back out of my driveway and I have to fight that battle all the time. Understood. And there's not a hundred foot, there's not a hundred and fifty foot of sight line around that corner. Mm -hmm. And I think a traffic engineer is going to say um, it's not going to work there. And you would only 
be allowed to turn right to go south. Right. You would not be allowing anybody to pull out of there and turn left. And then on, you put it to further any traffic coming out of Bridgewater to turn, uh, West Bridgewater to turn left into that first street is going to get rear-ended because especially if they stop. I've lived there over 32 years at my house. There's been seven accidents that have been major accidents that have been head-on from people coming south out of Brockton and trying to turn left to stay on Copeland Street and getting hit by a car coming north out of West Bridgewater on North Elm Street. And they've been, many, many of them are can, catastrophic accidents. Um, head-on, people smashing airbags going, and, and uh, I've had to respond to them if I'm home and, and, and try to help them out. But um, I, I, I don't know what to tell you to do to try to maintain two points of egress out of there. You know, Maybe those, you can work that out at a planning board and let, let you only board. do one. I mean, perhaps, a, you know, perhaps that one is a one-way, an exit only, no, a right no. turn only. Uh, that would still provide emergency access for a fire truck, but maybe maybe we make that just a right turn only exit. Uh, um, it's a hundred percent of the development is in Brockton. Entirely in Brockton, yes. And there's what are, what are you doing with the other acreage that the golf course owns in West Bridgewater? Uh, what is the proposal for that? There's there's no proposal on the table right now, but eventually there would be a, a smaller subdivision with that property. And that would be entering into that property off of Brooks Place? Yes. Okay. Any long-term reason to look at connecting the second egress out to Brooks Place yeah. other than you probably have to cross wetlands? There would be a wetlands crossing, which you know, isn't the end of the world. We can do them. Uh, but typically, Brockton roads in, Brockton and West Bridgewater don't like roads crossing into each other know the main roads do it but they don't like subdivision roads it just you know fire departments have a high time hooking up to my hydrant and your hydrant school buses dpw nobody wants roads going in it would solve that issue but i i don't see that either city or town would be happy with it just from past experience mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it just turned off. It would help. I got a good voice. I was a teacher all my life. <laughs> and I was also a union representative for a long time. It's on. So I am concerned about the factors. We got it going? All right. I got to hire you to come to my house too and clean and cook. All right. First, I want to commend uh, Councilor Lodge, Rita Mendez for being here, Councilor Susan Castro, State Rep Michael Beatty came in. Thank you for coming. I'm a little disappointed the mayor isn't here tonight, though. We have developers that have been coming into the city, coming into the city, building, 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 yet they don't give jobs to the Brockton people. And this is wrong. If we are 
going to let developers keep coming in, you've got to give 50% of those jobs to Brockton people, or we're going to put a stop to it. We, no, I'm serious about this. We need jobs in Brockton. Rob May has not done the job. He, the developers come in and build, 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 but he doesn't do anything for the workers in the city of Brockton to give them jobs. So, one thing I'm going to be really seriously looking at, a lot of union people, what's your game plan for hiring Brockton residents? Not a lot, but 50% to build, help build this project. And don't say we don't have the type of people who can build. We got bulldozer operators. We got great plumbers. We got great carpenters. We got we got it all here. Yep. So I, I've got a good answer to. Okay. The, the big buildings downtown. That, that's a totally different set of construction than this is. This type of job, roadway construction. There's three or four Brockton guys that do most of the work in Brockton. That more than likely would get this job. You know I hope. I know. We'll, we'll keep an eye on that. But I, I really you hope you do can, do that. Those, those Brockton guys are always looking for work, and I'm always giving them phone calls to give them work. Great. I'm a Brockton company, Bill's a, has a Brockton company, so there are Brockton people working on it already. But it, it's, most of the subcontractors on a job like this, they're Brockton companies that come and work on these jobs. I hope so. We'll keep an eye on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. So let me echo Mr. Hersey. I am grateful to counselors at large, Rita Mendez and David Texera for being here, as well as State Senator Mike Brady who is the busiest guy I know. Did you want to say something quickly? No, I'm, I'm just here to listen to everybody, and I want to listen to your concerns. Um, so I'm mainly here to just listen. But thank you, Council, for hosting me. Thank you. Who else would like to speak? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Okay. Um, I, I think only the, the probably the only, I'm glad for this project. I like the golf course. I'm glad the project's coming in. First, I have a right to sell their property. Um, the only thing that probably makes me nervous, as some other people said here, is the safety issue in that area on the road. That's all. <clears throat> um, maybe there needs to be a set of lights there. Maybe I live at Skyview Village, and I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's hairy getting in and it's hairy getting out uh, any time of the day. And I think it's time that, that the city of Brockton and West Bridgewater pay a little more attention from that bend up there coming around the corner, head down to us because it's really hairy. You know, they put the blinking light out for the 30 mile an hour thing, but I've talked to police and um, it's just not a big issue with them. And if they, if West Bridge, Brockton never shows up in that area, and I understand they're busy in the city, but uh, West Bridgewater, the cops, they're down further down the road trying to slow down speeders. I mean, it's quite a little uh, runway there in that whole stretch. So I just hope someone in Brockton, uh, maybe West Bridgewater, talk to traffic, is talking about what could happen there. Because I do believe that there's a potential of people getting hurt very badly um, in the future um, in that area. Um, I think that's it. Other than that, I'm, I'm fine. I guess the only thing I'm kind of wondering is, is Brockton, um, when they do this development, do they require um, landscaping, um, trees, um, whatever? Do they require that yeah. um, when they develop these lots and the neighborhood, um, or do they just let them slap houses up? Uh, yes. with grass seed and, and call it a day. Do they require that in the plan? Do they require that in the plan? They do. As, as part of the roadway construction, we have to plant street trees uh, as part of the, the roadway. They, they won't and accept the, the roadway. Do, Not on the individual houses. No. But no, I mean, realistically, nobody's going to spend $800,000 on a house that doesn't have a lawn and shrubs and trees. It's People are making a big investment. Nobody's going to buy these houses. Are, are we talking about eight hundred thousand dollar houses going in in the next three years or so? I mean, right now, you you see it. That's what the price is. Yeah. Well, I'm thrilled. I hope for a million dollars. There, there's a subdivision on North Cary Street that I just drove by. Those houses are going for close to eight hundred thousand. The yep. same size as this single family residential subdivision. That's okay. I don't okay. know that it's going to be like that in three years, but that's what it is right now. Okay. Someone else. What, Jeff? Yes, you're coming. Yeah. Let's go backwards a little. Let's go backwards a little. How long have you, uh, has your company owned all the land? I'm sorry? I don't own the land. The, the owner's right there, so. <laughs>
Well, you've owned the land, but uh, the golf course has been. Uh... Oh, okay. All right. See, I, I was unaware of that. Okay. To go back half a step in terms of things, all uh, people are talking about the uh, uh, the price of the houses. Uh, I think uh, not a surprise as to what you'd be asking for them in today's day and age. Uh, it, they're all going to be at market rate. Nothing is subsidized. All market rate. Okay. And uh, if this doesn't go through, and one of the because uh, uh, I think Susan brought up the fact that having to go through, or you did having to go through three different boards mm -hmm. or more in in the city of Brockton. And let's say you get turned down whether it's for the 35 houses that you're trying to get, or you wind up even getting turned down, potentially, possibly, who knows, uh, for the 30 houses. Is the land zoned for any other type of uh, business, uh, of uh, any type of, of thing zoned, going in there? It's zoned single family residential. That is the only thing That's that it. can go in there? Yes, sir. Well, it's probably very reassuring to everybody here. Thank you, guys. Somebody else? Okay, take them the long way. Chapter 40B Trump what? I mean, I suppose Chapter 40, Chapter 40B allows you to, to bypass zoning. Sure. It allows you to bypass to bypass zoning in, in all instances, lot size, building size, number of units. That's nothing that's on the table. So I don't know why we even talk about it, but Chapter 40B allows you to bypass every single thing except for the Wetland Protection Act. Well, we don't have anything. Oh, well, sure. Oh, yeah. No, it's it's out there. It's an option for any developer. Is there a is there a plan to protect the wetlands from the future residents of your development? Fencing or anything? What's yeah, going to keep them from wandering through, and destroying what little you're leaving for us? Sure. Well, the Conservation Commission, as I said, requires us to file anything within 100 feet of a wetland we have to file. As part of that filing in Brockton, they don't let us work within 25 feet of a wetland. And in What's most cases... What's from walking into the wetland? Well, I'm, I'm getting there. In most cases, they require us to put markers so everybody knows that there's wetlands there so the future homeowner can't say, I didn't know there were wetlands. And in most cases, again, they require us to put fences across the back of the property, usually a, a split rail fence. But there's nothing stopping anybody from, there's nothing stopping you tonight from walking through there. Yeah. Other than the fact I respect it. No. There, there's nothing, the Wetlands Protection Act doesn't prohibit you from walking through a wetland. It's on my property. I can walk through it if I don't mind getting my shoes wet. So no fencing. You said to be fencing. Well, it's, that would be up to the Conservation Commission, but again, if it's on my property, I can walk through a wetland. So you also said um, that there's going to be a section. I, I don't imagine that it would be, but we haven't even, we haven't even been out there. No, I said I don't imagine that it would be. Right here. Yes. Yep. That's about 400 feet to the to the town line. Yes. What's the lot size of that house or that property? About four acres. Four acres. Yeah. Four acre lot with about so four hundred. Like you want land that stops about halfway through that fifth hole and the sixth hole, then the entire sixth hole is wet with toilet. Who's going to own that property after you can sell it? Well, right, right now, if this plan was approved today and these lots were sold, 
they would still own the remaining land in West Bridgewater. Who's they? The current owners. The current owners would still own half of this whole piece of land. Until the new owners are still own that small piece of land plus up to what you can farm in my property. What are your plans on that? The last questioners live in West Bridgewater, right. and they want to know what you're going to do with the land in West Bridgewater. Well, as I said, r realistically, I mean, th this is a big project, and it's going to take some time and money to get this off the ground. At some point, they would be looking at doing a, uh, a residential project there. It's a lot smaller. It's a much smaller piece. That, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not as big of a piece, and there's a considerable amount of wetlands in the West Bridgewater property. So it would be a much smaller project, but we haven't done a single, we haven't looked at it at all. So on the proposed project, what would be your operation hours? Because this is a residential neighborhood. Are you gonna start like, a, are you gonna have a time frame of when you can work? I mean, you're gonna disrupt our lives with yeah. a, I know, think the, with the noise I, pollution alone, understood. with the regrading the, of the property. Yeah, the city buildings. has an ordinance that covers all that, but it's typically. But you don't know the answer? Well, yeah, I do. I'm getting to it. It's typically it starts at 7 a.m. and I don't know if it's 7 p.m., 5 p.m. I'm not sure what it is. What is the duration, of the time that you think it's going to take to develop this land and do? Probably three years, maybe even three four. Three years of noise yeah. pollution for us. Three or four years. So the owner of the property now, where do you live? In Lakeville. Lakeville. So this is nothing. This doesn't disrupt your life at all. You, I bought a house in West Bridgewater that was close to two golf courses because they were close to two golf courses. Like I just, I was happy that I thought it was land that would not be developed, that it would be a golf course. I like the quiet enjoyment I bought. I moved from the city to West Bridgewater for quiet enjoyment and you're taking that away from me. residents for 40 years there and they tried to I'm just going to give you a little bit of a background because they tried to put a development up in there I don't know I'll say 30 years ago it was Copperwood development and what they did is they came in with this huge plan for Brockton and West Bridgewater because West Bridgewater shut them down this is why they're doing just Brockton now but for a, don't think for a minute that they're not going to develop the West Bridgewater side because that's exactly what they're going to do because think, it's all about the mighty dollar. I think we've been, I think I said that right away. There will be a development in West Bridgewater. We're just not doing it now. It's, this is the first project. That project will come. I don't think we never said that wasn't going to happen. So. Is that okay? I'm not sure that it was flushed out. <laughs> You got it. I only got it. Is this on? Yep. I have a question, and it's kind of going back on Copeland. What are you going? Is this road going to be accepted by the city? Or is it going to be a private way? No, it will be accepted by the city. Yes. Understood. Yep. It would be accepted by the city if the city councilor spo sponsored it for acceptance. Remains to be seen. Okay. Somebody else? Somebody else? Sorry. Hello. I have a comment. Of 
Well, there's, there are several issues, but I think that the, the predominant one is there's some topographical issues on the property that create a hardship emanating from the land itself. Uh, we're developing that, and, but that will basically be the, the primary issue will be advancing before the zoning board. That the topographical issues are going to cause a substantial amount of uh, financial wherewithal to make the land that great to build the type of houses we have to build. If it's if it's over ten percent, yes, correct. So forty B is not going to be an option. So we don't have to worry about that. What we're trying to avoid, though, is <clears throat> uh, a lesser form of affordable housing, somewhere above forty B and somewhere less than um, medium type houses. We don't we really don't have an intent at this point to get into that. We prefer to build a more of an upscale, expensive home. Hi. It's, it's kind of a, a repeat question, but I just don't understand why if Brockton has rules and regulations like 175 foot feet in the front of the house, why you got to insist on changing it? You know, you can't just follow the rules at least. You got to change it and say like you think it's, it's enough. Well, again, uh, the, the purpose for that is it makes the project we are developing a little more harmonious with the overall plan uh, the rules are always subject and invited to change. That's why they have boards that allow a request to vary the rules, and that's what a variance is. Um, that's part and parcel with all of the rules in any municipality. This, if, it's, if it creates a more harmonious situation where there is not a substantial detriment, not a minor inconvenience, a substantial detriment to the overall issues involved, then the board will consider that. So I have a question. Is the intention of the owner currently to also develop this land, or is the intention to sell it after you obtain, if you obtain all your permits? Well, I think the, the, the more important question would be, is the intent of the seller to comply with the plan that we're submitting before the board now? I, I don't have a crystal ball, neither does he. If he sells it, it would still have to be regulated and complied by whatever the city outlines for us and grants to us for permitting, no matter who owns it. So well, I don't know what difference it would make to the uh, public, uh, to whomever, whoever the owner is, as long as it's in compliance with whatever the grants and rules and regulations are. Well, that's smooth, but respectfully, I like my question. I think my question's the better question. Uh, I don't, well, at this... I, I, I don't even buy green bananas anymore, so to tell you too far in advance, I don't know. It, currently, he has no intention of selling it. But I can't hold him to a year or two years from now.
I just want to make a comment to the audience that this meeting is informational and carries no weight. The weight, if you're for or against, doesn't matter which one, only carries weight at the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting, if and when it comes up. So uh, our ward councilor uh, hopefully will keep us informed uh, if and when that happens. And when numbers show up, it, it means something. So bear that in mind. Is there anyone else who wants to make a comment or say something, you know, or ask a question? Who? Who? Paul? If this goes forward, and get your approval, are you going to redevelop the land to the contour of level? Are you going to leave, leave the contour of the hill and build houses on the hill? What's the, what's the idea here? Are you going to level out the whole thing? No, no, we wouldn't level it. Just to build any road, you need up and down the valley to make the drainage. You've got to have the water run down the gutter into the catch basin, following the contour of the land is uh, more economical than wiping the whole thing out and have a flat road to the water drain. So we'll do our best to maintain the, the current one. Did you also understand the open streets are under a moratorium? I just want to say something before we end, okay? So, so the utilities, are you proposing to put telephone poles and bring in things aerial, or is this going to be a full underground neighborhood? Just underground utilities. Oh, All underground? Yes.
Oh, did you want to speak? Yeah, okay. Please. Senator Brady, please join in. Thank you, Council. And I wouldn't have known about this without Council and the Council letting me know this past week. And I thank you because it's my first time seeing these plans and hearing about them. Um, I know there was concerns about traffic, and, and those two roads coming in are very dangerous. Uh, is and I didn't hear if you is there any plans from the developer to put lights in there at all? And I don't know if the question was asked why, but no, I know people go right through stop signs exactly. So. In that I heard that there might be three artesian wells on the land. Is that true? Nope, it's true. Is you mean currently? Yeah. Oh, oh, I, I thought you meant if we're going to build it. No, no, because my next question was any plans to do anything with the wells? And then I do believe that in a wetland area, you've got to have like a retention pond. And right. is there, where is the plans to put the retention ponds, if more than one or whatever? The, as far as the wells go, I would assume. Anyone else? Yeah. Oh. Are, are the plans available on where the water retention pond would be? We haven't got to that point yet, but I mean, realistically, it has to be close to the wetland. We've got to be able to put the water in a pipe and get it to the wetland. Uh, so it's, it's got to be in the back close to those wetlands. But I understand your concern being the director of us. Yeah, I mean, I get water in my basement every time it's sprinkled. And you're yeah. telling me you're going to put a lot of water in my backyard. Well, <laughs> no, I'm Your access, your access sucks. We all live in this area and we know that cars come down North Elm Street with a head of steam on them because it's 40 miles an hour there. And then bam, it just past where Copeland Street comes in and it becomes Copeland Street. It's Brockton and it becomes 30 miles an hour. It's very difficult, it's a nightmare. Patty lives right there. table on this side of town. We get water in our basements now. We're really concerned about when you start moving this dirt around, where is that water going to go? The houses on Copeland Street are lower than this land. Water goes down, right? Follows gravity. So we're very concerned about that. It goes without saying, we think you have too many lots. Yeah, we think that the, the resulting traffic, what do they say, six cars, six trips a day per bedroom and stuff? 
you know, between Amazon and everything else, we, we think it's going to really bottleneck Copeland Street, and Copeland Street's already a mess. Um, and we don't like change, right? We don't like change. We don't like change. It's been... been golfing there forever, telling me about the flora and the fauna and the baby raccoons and the deer and how awful that they're all going to be displayed. Thank you very much, gentlemen.